Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. A couple of weeks ago, we went to the Great Pyramids of Giza and we had an incredible experience. We were very lucky to have everything turn out. It was very well organized. We got to beat the worst crowds. I think there's a lot of pitfalls when you're visiting the pyramids and I can imagine that this experience wouldn't have been as good if we had been less lucky with how things turned out. So with this, I'd like to give you guys my best tips for visiting the pyramids of Giza so that hopefully you can have as great of a time as we had. Before I get into the tips, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I'm uploading videos at least once a week from our life here in Bali or from our travels around the world and there will be a lot of cool content coming out so make sure you hit the subscribe button and if you like this video please leave a comment and click the thumbs up and let's get right into it probably my biggest recommendation is to get a guide usually when we travel we just try to wing it and, and try to do it on our own but having a guide when visiting the pyramids of Giza was a game changer our guide came and picked us up at 7 30 in the morning and from there, it was basically a whole day plan where we went to the pyramids. We went to the Egyptian History Museum and it was just really well organized. It was also amazing to have someone with you who could actually answer questions because there's a lot of facts to be known. There's a lot of cool things that he could tell you and obviously you can ask a lot of questions. So I would really recommend getting a guide. I'll put the link to, in the description to the people we used. We didn't do much research. There could be better companies out there, but we were very happy with the service we got. So I would really recommend it. You will really want to go visit a big museum in Cairo, not just the pyramids. The museum is basically complementing what you'll see at the pyramids and you'll get to experience up close a lot more about the pharaohs, about the different treasures, all the amazing artwork and everything that the ancient Egyptians were making. So make sure that you get to go to the museum as well. When it comes to timing, I would recommend going to the pyramids first so that you can get there in the morning when it's a little bit cooler. Don't forget that the Great Pyramids are in the desert and it's going to be scorching hot. So if you go early morning before you go to the museum, that's, that will probably be a better experience. When we went, it also didn't seem that crowded. I was under the impression that the Great Pyramids of Giza would be the most crowded tourist place in the world. And for sure there were people there, but it wasn't too bad. We were there at about 8 or 9 a.m. and yeah, it wasn't bad at all. When we booked our guide, we had the option to either get picked up at 7.30 or 8. I would strongly recommend just go as early as possible. As I said before, if you can beat the crowds and beat the heat, that's definitely worth it. When you go to the pyramids, you'll have the options to go inside the Great Pyramids. To go inside costs a lot more. I think it costs about 400 Egyptian Lira, which is about $27. I would recommend doing it because it's just an experience to go inside. It just shows you how incredibly complex the construction of these monuments are. Unfortunately, one thing the Great Pyramids of Giza are known for is people getting scammed. There's a lot of people that are looking to scam you, so you just gotta be on the alert. I hate to say it, but be skeptic to everyone. When we were walking towards the pyramids, a random guy was asking for tickets, but I could tell that it was something up, so I just didn't give him the ticket and kept walking. And turned out he wasn't an authority there at all. So I don't know what his angle was, but obviously he would somehow rip us off as soon as he has the tickets. If you're going to the pyramids, you can bring your camera, uh, your video camera, but if you bring a tripod or a stabilizer, they will charge you for that. Obviously, if you're gonna take some good photos and you need a tripod, for sure, just, just pay. I don't know how much it is, but this is a once in a lifetime thing, so I probably wouldn't budge on that. And if you wanna shoot with a tripod, just pay for your tripod. By the foot of the pyramid, there will be people offering you to go on a horseback or ride a camel, and they will tell you that the area is too big to walk and you really have to get on a horse and a camel. That's complete bullshit, what? and you can really walk around the pyramid looking at them. It's not necessary to get a camel or a horse there. However, if you do want to ride a camel, I would recommend you do that at the panorama point, which is a viewpoint where you can see all the pyramids there. And that brings me up to the next tip, which is do ride a camel, but do it at the panorama point. They all offer one hour camel ride. We ended up getting just 30 minutes which was perfect it's nice to get on the camels it's a cool experience because you get to imagine how things were back in the day and I would really recommend doing it but 30 minutes was more than enough for us and at half the price with basically the same experience I would just do 30 minutes when we were to ride the camels we had our guide basically negotiate for us and of course he knew some dude that had a camel there and he gave us a good price and it was a really nice guy so that's another advantage with having a guide is that they can help you negotiate and, and get a good deal. The next tip is to really read up about the pyramids about ancient Egypt. 
if you know the facts, you'll understand how incredibly mind-blowing this place is and what achievement it is to build these monuments. There's still a lot of things that we can't explain today, even with modern technology. And just to know these extraordinary facts will help make this an unforgettable experience. If you do know that the pyramids are built of rocks up to 70 ton in weight, and that the Great Pyramid of Giza had 2.3 million blocks of stone in it, you understand how impressive this is. And the fact that it only took 20 years to build it, that will mean that 12 blocks of stone will have to be set down every hour, day and night for 20 years straight for them to be able to finish this. And knowing that some of these blocks of stone weigh up to 70 to 80 tons, you understand how incredible this is. The pyramids are also perfectly aligned north to south, which for 4,500 years ago would be an incredible feat just to have the knowledge of where north and south is and to be able to measure it so well that the pyramids are perfectly aligned north to south with a degree of error of 0.5, which is so impressive. Another crazy thing to think about is that the pyramids are 4,500 years old. That means that when Cleopatra was the pharaoh of Egypt, which was about 50 years BC, the pyramids were already two and a half thousand years old, which means that when Cleopatra was pharaoh, she was closer to our time than she was to the building of the pyramids. If you go to Rome and you see the St. Peter Cathedral, you'll be watching a building that is a thousand years younger than when people at Cleopatra's time went and saw the Great Pyramid. All this stuff is just mind blowing. The more you know before you go there, the better your trip will be. And that brings me on also to the last tip, which is make sure you ask your guide questions. The guide we had was an Egyptologist and he knew so many incredible facts about the pyramids. And there were so many things that I didn't understand before that I could ask him questions about. And he could answer everything and he just made the tour so much better. So I hope these tips will help you. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure to leave a comment. And I hope to see you back at my next video. I'll be uploading at least every Monday and sometimes also another video later in the week. See you next time.